Hello, I'm Silent Death, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, Science Harder Campaign. We left off last time with this ship, uh, the base race, having just entered orbit of Minmus on its mission to complete a Minmus base contract, or a base on the surface of Minmus. We're going to be trying to land right about there. In a nice flat spot, which we've already taken research from. We were not able to fit any science on the ship. Kind of limiting at our amount of fuel we had it was either do the aerospike aerospike contract or bring science and i chose to go for money because we were pretty poor at the time so let's fast forward a little bit only a about eight second burn eight and a half second burn thermometer down there we could maybe pick up if we had a thermometer. We of course have the B team of flying this. Or two thirds of the B team. Overshot that a little bit. Now, if I remember right, this doesn't have RCS or anything. That's good enough. Okay, now that we're on to go to surface mode. And we cannot hold retrograde because the B team is not yet that skilled. That is why they're out here. Did you gain some seals? And we also have a very weird landing gear arrangement. We're basically equipped for going to Kerbin landing and surviving the re-entry heat. Though not very well equipped, actually. Because that's probably all going to burn up. Probably. How much life support do we have left on this ship? We have 37 days. And we're about to have some more from our resupply mission. So let's get a little bit closer. We'll turn on surface mode. So impact burn, a suicide distance. Of course that doesn't take into account a almost 130 meters a second of horizontal speed. We'll see how good we can do this. What is our acceleration? About 5 meters per second. We're going at 136. That's going to be interesting. Guess we'll start burning at about 30 seconds impact, maybe. Depending on how fast we're going when we get there. How long is impact? In fact, time, 11 minutes. So we got a little bit. Six minutes, five minutes, four. Let's get lined up again. How are we on power? Plenty of power. So we're going to retract those. I don't do anything to break. We'll go ahead and get out our landing gear. Make sure that we're... Kind of facing the right way. Now we're up to about 32 seconds. Impact time in uh, 3 minutes, 2 minutes. Still 2 minutes. One minute. Q 
getting awfully close there. Fifty seconds. Y'all hold it there. Forty seconds. We'll go at thirty-five. Okay, yeah, we should be totally fine. It actually could have held it a little bit longer, but I was getting a little bit uncomfortable. Just kill all of our horizontal speed and then let us fall. Well, oh, yeah, we're still way ahead. Uh, we could have waited a while, a little bit wasteful. Hopefully, it doesn't kill us or anything. We'll probably drain whatever fuel our satellite has left. And put that in here too. Won't give us much, but it'll give us some. Okay, now what is our suicide burn? It should actually tell us properly. That's not very high. Don't know if I'm going to wait that long. It's like we can accelerate though. Six hundred. We aren't going very fast. We could probably land on our gear. Our gear did not go down. There we go. Okay. And now it's good. I'll just slowly settle down right there. I'm gonna go over that way then. And we'll do a gentle touchdown. And then we'll just plop over on our landing gear. Not as much Delta V as I would like left. We'll let this kind of fall us over. Then we'll use it to kind of slow us down. There we go. Now that we just need to maintain stability for 10 seconds. There we go. A fast 10 seconds. So that gave us 487,000 Kerbal Bucks. Well worth it, I think. Now then. We need to intercept this guy. Set as a target. And basically we want to get him as he passes over us which may take a while probably do a short orbit come out and then catch up with him from behind that would be the fastest thing which would mean I think we need to burn south or down Up in that direction, maybe? A little bit confused. If he's that way... We need to burn in the opposite direction of him. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Okay. Do these have... Okay, we can turn around that way. Just using SAS, apparently.
Are y'all having a good time? Great. Now then, turn on SAS. Do that. Raise the gear. And that actually might not be the right way to go. No, we're moving in the opposite direction, I think. Not in his... Yeah, that's the right way. I think. No, it's not. Need to go over this way. Okay, that's the wrong way, too. I am just all kinds of wrong here. Wait, which direction are you orbiting? I have no idea which way it's going. I thought it was going this way, but it may not be. I'm entirely uncertain. In which case, I have completely gone the wrong way. You know what? We're going to orbit, and the satellite can come join us. Now that the B-Team has got some life support, enough for 110 days. Assuming that we keep this attached, because it still has much of the life support in there. Though it does cost us 100 Delta V, and I think Delta V is going to be what we're more worried about. Because we are going to try to enter the sun's sphere of influence and then pop back into carbon for our landing. So that'll take us quite a ways or quite a while to get there, 41 days. But still, we should have enough life support above the craft to do that and come back. Still have plenty of time unless we don't have enough fuel, in which case we're going to be screwed. Which is why I'm considering leaving the life support attached to give us time to rescue ourselves. But I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. We're going to try it. We'll use all the RCS out of the resupply ship. And that should help out a little bit. Tiny bit. And I suppose, I guess we could always get out and push, though pushing something this heavy would not be easy. Landing is also going to be hard. But one thing at a time, let's just get these guys going on their way. We managed to reach escape velocity just using RCS and still have another 100 units of RCFs, RCS left. Turn off of both of those. We can then get out somewhere around here at 32 days. And then we have another maneuver node set up, which is 212 Delta V, which will get us within 40 kilometers of carbon. That should be enough to get us slowed down for a capture, but not so steep where we will immediately land and thus burn up in the atmosphere. We need to be going quite, quite slow. So hopefully that will work. I guess we will find out. Now on to some other things. There has been an update to the remote tech contract pack. It had the requirements for this contract to be the longer range satellites than you actually needed to complete it and now it has been updated so that has been fixed so we can actually do the contract being that we're already on our way to duna we do need to do this so that we can get some money and also talk to all the probes and stuff that we have flying to duna their mid-course correction burns are coming up in the near future in fact, if we go look at our 
alarm clock settings. We can see 17 days until the refueler needs to make a correction burn. Then 23 days for the short range commsats. That's the other ship. The commsat pack is 38 days and the dynamic duno is 61 days. But of course the dynamic duno does not need any communications. It still does that. It hates. I hate it all the time. Just hate it. But that's just to make sure that we properly aero break. Of course, we're going to have to talk to our guys. So that is what that contract is going to be for. I've already designed a satellite for that. Here is the satellite that I have designed. It has quite a lot of batteries. 4,402 storage and battery power. I guess capacitance. A single FLT 100 fuel tank. Four of the Communitron 88s. One for Moho, one for Aduna, one for Eve, and then one for the active target. Then four of these shorter range dishes. One for the moon. One's going to talk to Minmus. One will talk to Kerbin. And the other one will just be active target. Just in case. And to maintain symmetry. We're doing the moon and Minmus because I think that's going to be the easiest way to keep in communication. We also have some short range omni antennas and a long range omni antenna just for immediately exiting the cargo bay and getting into orbit this will be put into polar orbit and to do that we are going to be using a new space plane this is the plane i have built for launching our satellite it did something a little bit different with the wings here I think I like the looks of that and may be using it more in the future. This particular plane climbs quite quickly, though it does have a few issues with a deadly reentry burning off the RCS thrusters and other things. Not quite sure what's causing that, but I've been trying to fix it. Hopefully it'll be fixed before the next episode. We had to redesign a, a new plane because our previous sat lifter was not quite large enough to lift this satellite. I had hoped that our sat lifter that we used last episode would be enough to handle all my satellite needs, but that was not the case. It wasn't too hard to design this plane though, and I do of course like the looks of it a little bit better than the previous design. But let's talk about the cargo. We're going to be launching the satellite into a highly eccentric polar orbit. How eccentric or how high the apoapsis needs to be is going to defi be defined by the satellites themselves. Or the antennas on the satellites, I should say. The satellite at the distant planets is going to be pointed towards EVE going to have a cone appointed towards Steve, I should say. And that cone is going to be, or the width of that cone is going to be defined by the angle of the dish, which for the satellites we're using, or the dishes we're using, are 0 0.06 degrees. Now, to define our altitude, we need to take that and form a right triangle. So, we half the cone, if you just think about slicing the cone down the middle, and then the angle at the far planet is going to be one half the angle of the cone for the satellite, for the antenna. I keep saying satellite, so 0 0.03 degrees, and the distance between the two is going to be equal to the distance between the two planets at the closest approach, which is going to be the closest planet is Eve, so Carbon has an orbit of 13.6 gigameters. Eve is 9.8 gigameters. Subtract those two. Multiply that by the tangent of 0.03 degrees. 
and then subtract the radius of Kerbin, 300 kilometers, to get the altitude above Kerbin. That gives us 1.69 million meters. We could fudge that a little bit since they're not going to be that close very frequently. Or we could just keep it like this. We'll have to see which one works better. We made it into orbit a bit singed and a bit of a problem with some fuel things, but we made it. Nothing else matters. So we will pop this out. Please don't break. <laughs> Goodbye. And then we'll switch to that. Judrick can hang out here for a couple of days, I think. Yeah, he has five days left. Extend your panels. Is that action group? Yep, yeah, okay. Extend your other antenna. I can't ever click on those. Please don't burn off though. Okay, that does appear to be active. We're going to align you here. We're going to get a node set up at our Periapsis, I guess. Doesn't really matter if we go above or below the planet as long as we go somewhere. Actually, I probably want to do it right about here. Just change where the periapsis is. Right over the pole. And then... Let's see, how long was that again? Alright, 1.69 million meters. And that's pretty close. It's probably as close as we're going to get. I'm not sure if that's eccentric enough. But we'll find out. We can hope it is. You know, if we were in range of these guys, we could go out to 2.5 because then it would bounce off of them. No, it wouldn't. Never mind, that's wrong. Okay, how long do we need to burn? Oh, we don't have Kerbal Engineer. There's a mistake. Fifty-seven seconds. And that is the wrong direction. Well, crap. Okay. I did not realize we were going in that direction. But that's fine. It doesn't really matter. as fast as we can go a little bit faster now we can't hey it stopped we'll wait for about 30 seconds do we even have our CS on there We passed it. Well, this is close enough. Planet is moving and it's creating an optical illusion type thing. Oops. Little bit too far there. Oh, that's probably close enough. We could actually probably go out a little bit further. It only matters 
when it's absolutely at its closest point. So you could kind of ignore it and go to like its mean point. If we really wanted to. That would give us more uptime overall. We'll put it around 2.5 and see how that works. Okay. Now then. You need to target Eve is fine. You uh, these are going to overlap and I don't like that. Need to target Moho. You uh, actually I'll start with you down here. Let's see, where's Duna at? There you are. And then you are going to go with Active Vessel. Now then we'll set up Carbon. The Moon. And Minimus. I guess we already have someone targeted at Active Vessel. We don't need two. Wouldn't make any sense. So that should be our satellite. Let's make sure that's getting the proper amount of sun. There we go. There's someone over there, probably our craft. Might want to lower the periapsis, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. It's pretty close. Not sure if that would change things very much. Two hours, one hour. We'll have to wait and see if we need to extend that out any further. The mean distance would be quite a bit further out. Quite a bit further out. All right, let's go land Dudrick. Dudrick is going to have a, a little bit of an interesting time here. In my haste to uh, build this plane, I have forgotten some essential things like air brakes and parachutes. So he has no way to slow down. And, of course, this plane just happens to have excellent glide characteristics and doesn't want to land very easily. So what Dudrick ends up doing is kind of ignoring the runway and saying, Hey, you know, there's a whole lot of grass out here and far fewer buildings for me to crash into. So I think I'll land over here on the grass and then, you know, drive over to the runway or something like that. Poor Dudrick. Always suffering because of me. But he probably deserves it. Last night, I couldn't sleep. So I spent the time working on uh, this plane. It is loosely based on the SR-71. However, I could only paint the wings black and not the rest of the plane. Unfortunate, but that's what we have. It has a slightly upgraded cargo bay from the X-6, which is the other plane we use for getting science from around Kerbin. It is also, or should also be, rather fast. Possibly the fastest plane that we have designed yet. We'll have to uh, wait and see how that goes. We have Bob, Jeb, and Doom and Kerman. 
Bill is out with the B team and we needed an engineer, so Demon got to come along. We have a mission that's on the other side of the planet, and I think the Badlands are over there. So it's my hope that we can grab some science from the Badlands while we're doing this mission and testing out this plane. And then head back. We only have approximately a third of the amount of fuel that this plane will hold. But I hope that will be enough to get there and back. If everything works out, we'll be using this plane for more missions in the future. We do have a lot of science together around here. And we'll have even more once we unlock the Gravioli detector. Thirty-eight point one science from that mission, and a little bit of money. Sixty-two k, four k, eight k, eight k, eight k, and that is it. Up to one point seven million cargo bucks. About doubled our money. Well, more than doubled our money if you count. The cost from that but that is it for this episode next time we'll probably focus on getting a science from a minimus and the moon are trying to work towards that goal like if you like subscribe if you're not leave a comment if you have anything to say, I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.